Okay, I'm just going to go through a few more features of um, some more advanced features of questions and setting up surveys. So the first we're going to look at is piped text. So I'm just going to add a block just to show you how this works. So um, I'm just going to call this piped. Um, and this can be done in all sorts of different ways, but I'll show you the most straightforward way just to get a sense of what piped text is. So if I created a um, an open-ended question, um, and if I said, which is your, um, or um, what is your favorite fruit? Um, and then that's a very standard question where you can put a, a single answer. But what we can do now is if I add a page break and then create a new question, I can now ask something about that. So what I can do here is, why do you like, and I can take their answer from this question and add it into the actual question here. That's called piped text. So I'm going to click on piped, and I'm going to click on here. You can see you can do it from all sorts of different areas. I can put the current day, the current time, some link to somewhere else, another survey. But I'm just going to do the standard one, which is take um, a question, um, and I'm going to take it from here, question 18, why do you uh, like and I'm going to take it from the, not the question text from their answer text which is that second one there so you can see here it comes up this quite strange value why do you like something so much um, and so this is their entry to this question I'm now going to make this question compulsory um, so they have to complete this because this will look odd if they don't um, Oh, sorry, I have put the, as I've already noticed, it's worth noting here, um, there's a little uh, error here. I've put the, the wrong question, uh, I've put the actual question itself in here. Uh, so sorry, I'm just going to go through that and put the pipe text. Um, so a good lesson there. What is your favourite fruit? And that's what I'm going to put is the answer text to uh, question 17. You can see here, question 17, the entry value. Why do you like whatever their answer is so much? So this allows us to um, get a bit more of an in-depth data, um, say, for example, like as you would in an interview in terms of um, their response. So this could also be if you wanted to make it more in, uh, formal and you could ask people their name and then you could say, you know, what is your name, first name? And if I put my first name was Paul and then later on you could put that in the question question hi Paul what do you think about this this can make it somewhat more informal kind of informal um, or more interactive experience and so we can take pipe text from different areas the other thing we can do is um, uh, take pipe text from questions that there's fixed answers so if I said um, which of these do you like best um, and then uh, option one option three so I'm just going to do three options for the moment um, and then so this allows so so again I'm going to put uh, why do you like and I'm going to put their pipe text from question 19 here so you see here question 19 and then we take their selection is um, the selected choices um, and then I'm going to make that as uh, again I can do it um, I could uh, do a rank order for example and I could edit the items as um, which were most important uh, because of one because of two because This is their answer to the previous question. In fact, what I might do is make this into a um, pick group and rank, and then they can put um, these as I'm just going to give two so you can see the idea. Um, and I'll just have that one as important, not at all important, and then they can put the answers in there. So I'm just going to again add a page break. So what you'll see now as I preview that particular question, so we're just going to have to go through again, I'm just going to ignore validation, go through to the question that I'm most interested in. So this is the one where we have pipe text. So 
first question I should be able to come here. Uh, that's just our general question. So question this one, what is a favorite fruit? So if I put in banana, and then you'll notice here, why do I like bananas so much? Um, and then I can put in a response into this question. And then the second one, which of these do you like best? I'm gonna click on option two. And so notice here, why do you like option two? And then I can put in the, the options here. Um, and again, I'd give some instructions there. So you can see how we can take text from previous questions and make a more interactive experience in our surveys. So that's one way of dealing with piped text, and we can do it in all sorts of ways. Which the other way shows um, uh, two features here. One is about embedding information to a survey, and the second is about um, then using this to display different elements of a survey if we were doing something more experimental like conditions, and I'm going to work through the survey flow here. So if we add a block here, so what I'm going to do, um, I'm going to do, I'm going to call this condition one. And I'm going to create a new question here, and this is just going to be an open-ended question. And so this one I'm going to say, please watch the following video and then write your thoughts on the problem. So here I've added some question, but what I want to do is now insert a video link. So I'm going to go um, to... Uh, YouTube here. Um, I've got a video um, and so there's lots of different ways to embed but if it's a simple example on YouTube you get this share uh, feature and you get this idea of embed. So there if you click on embed you'll get an embed code. So I'm just going to um, see that embed code and if I click on that I can copy that. So I'm just going to click on copy. So if I now go back to my survey and then so we've got we've been through the rich content editor then, uh, so this is in the rich content editor. Um, we've, we've gone through that. Um, we've done pipe text. I can remove formatting. So if we look on the right hand side, what we can see here is normal view or HTML view. So I'm clicking on HTML view. And what I'm gonna just do is paste that video um, uh, embed code in there. And we can see that that is now embedded within the um, uh, question. So if I click back on the normal view, you'll see now that the video is within that question text. So I'm now going to create another block, which I'm going to call condition two. And I'm going to do the same thing. I'm just going to create a standard text entry. I'm going to just copy this code. No, sorry, this te question text. Now I'm just going to do a different video this time, so I happen to have one here. So I'm just going to click and share that, copy that, and then I'm going to go to HTML view. I'm going to embed that. So I actually want that on the next line, so I'm just going to press return. So you can see here we have two videos. But what I want to do is show participants just one of those videos. So this brings us to the next feature, which is survey flow. So when we've set up our survey and the information, one thing I haven't included some demographics, but I'll do that in a moment. Um, we might want to go to our survey flow. Now, this is how people go through your survey. So um, this is the order they come to the information sheet and then they will just move through this in order. But what we might want to do is actually have different ways of moving through the survey. So I'm actually going to say that I want their demographics at the end. So I'm going to drag that down to the end. So when they finish their when they finish their key parts, that's when they fill in their details about who took part in the survey. Um, I definitely want them to do the information sheet and consent form first. But these attitudes, behaviours and opinion and pipe text, these might be in uh, I don't mind which order they do. I mean, it may be that actually if they fill in these questions first, it might impact on these later questions. So really, I don't want them to have these questions impacting on these. And so I'm going to randomise the order of these so that it isn't a systematic impact of all participants have completed one part of the questionnaire first, followed by the other parts. So what I'm going to do below the consent is I'm going to add what's called a randomizer. So the randomizer says randomly present some of these and I'm just going to move these elements by dragging and dropping them into this section here. So all of these and what you can see here is that 
you've got to randomly present these four elements. And so these we presented in a random order to the participants. And what we know is within these blocks, there's also some randomization. So I'm also going to add something below here. I'm going to add another randomizer, but this time I'm just going to present one of those two elements. So instead of two, so now they get all of these four and then they have to see one of these. So this is quite good for any kind of experimental designs. And we can get more complex. We can add below each of these, all these different sorts of um, features. But just to show you that in the, the survey flow, this is how participants will move through your survey. And so we have a standard randomizer for these bits, and then they're gonna see one part of this. So they see all of this and then one part of this. We could also add a branch. So um, if I added here, what we might want to do um, is have only some people. So for example, if we had, um, uh, we wanted to show some part of the survey for people who had experience with some element and some people who didn't, or some people who lived in certain locations, um, um, we can add branches. And so we have different parts of the survey dependent on um, other pieces that you've filled in. So we can do all sorts of different things. We could have a question. So I could have collected some information from a previous question, which I haven't got here, um, and the answers on that. Um, or I could embed data or depending on um, how they complete it, um, might have a different set of the survey um, or uh, it, all different sorts of features. So we can do branches and we can do, um, I'm just going to delete that, delete that element. Um, we can also have different elements in, in our survey in terms of moving through the survey. So you can see how through survey flow, we move people through the survey and we get the idea of um, uh, why it's important to use blocks. So if I just save that now um, and just preview the survey. So again, I'm just gonna go through this survey. Um, I am gonna to consent to take part and we should just see one of those videos. So I'm not gonna complete all the questions, but you'll get the idea. Um, so this is where I wanted to uh, see these in a random order. And here, what's our favorite fruit? So this is a required question. So I'm going to put apples here. Uh, why do you like apples so much? And you see the responses that we've had on this one. Um, and now we should get into, so we have a random video, one of those two videos, and this they can now watch within the survey. So this is all embedded within the survey. And it doesn't have to be a video, this could be an image embedded within the survey or, or other feature. And then you can include some responses here. And again, you can see that on the uh, mobile version there. And then you can see the response. Um, and that's taken to the end of the survey. So we can see now that we've got the survey flow, randomization, piped text, and different ways of using um, conditions or different sorts of ways of navigating through the survey.